Spurgeon. I uh, promised myself that I would look at at least the first title or sentence of the devotionals before recording them because after yesterday I encountered an issue where I was going to read and comment on a portion that was in one of the books and uh, it was almost five pages of reading or six and in trying to keep everything short and within 10 minutes that would have been a long or one well first of all i could have read it super fast but it would have been a challenge let's just say so in the middle of recording it i realized that god didn't really want to pass that on to people so i skipped it and now i learned from that lesson the other day that to check these ahead of time so the humorous part was that as soon as i read the opening line, I went, uh-oh. <laughs> and you'll see what I mean in a minute. But the joy I have is that whatsoever we read in Scripture does apply to us, but we let God apply it to us because sometimes our conscience can be and have a right standing with Him or a wrong perspective of Him. And we may treat ourselves more harshly than we should. Some people have a poor self-esteem. Me, as shocking as some people find this, is that, you know, if you uh, really get to know me, I mean, there aren't too many people that can really figure that one out anymore because I've been around a long time, so it's kind of harder to get back to the guy that was there from way back when. But the reality is, is that who I am and who God knows is really a very shy person inside, pretty quiet, pretty simple <laughs> but no one would accuse me of that nowadays so I don't know what to tell people it's like well those times when you can't find me and I'm all alone on the mountaintop and happy <laughs> that's who I really am but most people see me as a type personality and very outgoing and gregarious and oh I don't know able to express myself and speak and articulate, but those are accrued abilities, things I learned along the way that I developed and applied to my life as I became older and God changed me and made me into different instruments that I had to be for different people's ministries or different aspects of my life that caused me to develop into the personality that I am. And I'm just a nut like you are, but the bottom line is sometimes, you know, when things, you know, get said in the word, I get, uh-oh, Lord, please, you still love me? Just like you. <laughs> and we know, we know, we all know that Jesus died. But we don't know always and we don't apply is the principle that God loved us, so he allowed his son to die for us. And because he did, he accepts us. And that's what's always to bear in mind. If you know Jesus. So in Spurgeon, Thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. It is well frequently to weigh ourselves in the scale of God's word. You will find it a holy exercise to read some Psalm of David, and as you meditate upon each verse, to ask yourself, Can I say this? Have I felt as David felt? Has my heart ever been broken on account of sin? As his was when he penned his penitential psalms. Has my soul been full of true confidence in the hour of difficulty as his was when he sang of God's mercies in the cave of Abdullah or in the holds of Angadi and Gedi? Do I take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord? Then turn to the life of Christ and as you read, ask yourselves how far you are conformed to his likeness. Endeavor to discover whether you have the meekness, the humility, the lovely spirit which he constantly inculcated and displayed. It's funny, when you don't know the words coming in, you work at the syllables, you go inculcated, inc inculcated, and displayed. Take then the epistles and see whether you can go with the apostle in what he said of his experience. Have you ever cried out as he did, O wretched man that I am? Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Have you ever felt his self-abasement? Have you ever seen to yourself the chief of sinners? 
less than the least of all saints? Have you known anything of his devotion? Could you join with him and say, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain? If we thus read God's word as a test of our spiritual condition, we shall have good reason to stop many a time and say, Lord, I feel I've never been here or bring me here. Give me true penitence, or, yeah, penitence, such as this was I read of. Let me be just like what I'm reading. Give me real faith. Give me warmer zeal. Inflame me with more fervent love. Grant me the grace of meekness. Make me more like Jesus. Let me no longer be found wanting when weighed in the balances of the sanctuary, lest I be found wanting in the scales of judgment. Judge yourselves that ye be not judged. You know, I, I, it's funny because I, I love the way God operates. I mean, he totally, I mean, this is how God blows my mind. I mean, I don't know about your mind, but you know, you, you, you have your own mind and please keep it. <laughs> I have a problem with keeping my own mind and not losing it. Think about that for a minute. But the point is, is that I love the way God plays with my mind and articulates and arranges circumstances and I just get a kick out of it because I know it's him doing it and there's no way that anything else could come about. But I picked up this book just before, you know, I was getting ready to record this and I was thinking, man, you know, I want to talk about all these other books here, you know, and, you know, make the point that part of the reason why when I was first saved that I read so many devotionals like this was I felt like I was the chiefest of sinners. <laughs> I needed them all, you know, I'm desperate, I wanted more, you know, give me more, ah, you know, that, Lord, please, don't beat me, and, uh, to this day, you know, the more that I've learned along the way, once you know that once saved, always saved, and articulate, and are cognizant of all that grace applies, and how the redemption works, and the sanctification, and the fact that God is working on you to clean you up, straighten you out, fix you, design you, and make you into the way they want you to be, and that just the way you are, as you are, may be perfect, because even though you may be imperfect, he needed an imperfect person in the situation that you're in, so that he could use himself to be in you, so that he could accomplish his purpose, and you won't get the glory, but he will. Now, that's a whole lot of theology combined into one long sentence, but it's true. <laughs> so. The funny thing was, was that a funny thing happened to me when I picked up the book. Even before I read this, I didn't know what I was going to say, and I don't read these ahead of time. I just read a sentence or two. But when I finished this just now, it was like thinking of yourself as the chiefest of sinners, and that's exactly, that's exactly, that's exactly what I was thinking that I wanted to talk about before I came out to record it and before I read it. So then you go, while you're reading, you go, yes, I'm right on. You go and you want to dance because you're going yeah yeah are you in the center of God's will yeah yeah and you just go cool now maybe for you you say thus thank you got it but for me it's like all right that is so cool it's like man little did I know but the positive side is that I think each and every day as we go through these devotionals, <laughs> God knows I don't expect you guys to watch all of them, but you know, I record them all because I read them all. So as I'm being held accountable to reading these every day and, you know, applying them to my life, you know, as I share them with you and as someday if you meet me to find out whether or not I applied them to my life, that I already have the Word of God to judge my life and to be judged by the Word of God so that way I can see how God has brought me not from being the chief of the sinners and I'm still that way but rather I've come so far and he has made me to what I am and that he's gotten this much of the project done that we're within sight of the completion of all that he has accomplished in me both to do and to will of his good pleasure so that when Jesus comes guess what you're done won't that be nice? Won't that be cool? Yeah. That's why I always say, hey, I'm out of here. <laughs> I am so ready to go <laughs> somewhere and uh, get it over with. Let's get on with life. Real life. Eternal life. Ages to ages life. The life that is going to be with God forever and ever and ever and ever and ages and ages and ages and ages. 
and we just keep going on, and we don't deal with all this, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this hairy body, <laughs> or from this bald head, it's funny because I have such long hair most of the time, or from the world we live in, which is really sinful. So, look up, look forward, each day look to God and walk with Jesus, because He's already inside you. Wouldn't you like to just get to know Him better? Every day you can, with your devotional and your emotional. And maybe just the Holy Spirit in you.